OK, let's see what you guys think. The first one, the friar's plan to pretend like hero died out of shame. Is this a good plan? Will it work? One group took this question and they think yes. Because the plan's goal is to make Claudio regret his actions. So I talked a bit with this group. I asked them, well, the reason that Claudio abandoned Hero at the altar is because he thinks that she cheated on him. Would making him regret his actions change that fact in his mind? Uh, and through our discussion, we discovered that maybe on the basis of evidence, it may not change Claudio's mind. Maybe he would still think that Hero cheated on him. But this was in the early 1700s. This was before the Enlightenment. This was before logic was the only way to solve problems. If you think about when Claudio abandons Hero, and we looked at this scene last week, he doesn't try to find more information. He doesn't try to see if it is true. When he asks questions, he doesn't ask, is it true? He asks her to confess. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Here, so this is on page 244, line 85. Or 84, line 84. Out at your window betwixt 12 and 1. OK, line 83. What man was he talked with you yesternight out at your window betwixt 12 and 1? Now, if you are a maid, answer to this. If you are honest, if you are a virgin, give your answer. So from line 85, we we know that he already has an answer in his mind. He doesn't want to hear Hero's version. He wants Hero to tell him what he thinks is the truth. So it's not based on logic, it's based on emotion. He already has an answer. It's kind of like a uh, witch hunt, right? Uh, if you're a witch, I will burn you and you will not be burned. But if you if I burn you and you die, then you are not a witch, right? It's not logical. It's based on emotion. So if the accusation is based on emotion, then maybe the. Uh, reversal changing Claudio's mind, maybe that can also be based on emotion. And so the idea here would be. If hero dies of shame, then that must prove that she was honest. Again, not logical, right? Uh, it has nothing to do with evidence. It's all about human emotion. Now, in a real situation, if Hero does die of shame and she's honest, then yes, her reputation is restored, but she would be dead and that would not give us a happy ending. So the friar's plan is to pretend like she died so that we get the happy ending and her reputation restored so we can have our cake and eat it too. So yeah, it seems like a good plan. If we remember that it's not based on logic, it's based on emotion. Whereas the real logic, the real evidence comes from the people that are caught by the night watch and confess to uh, doing a, a evil plan to um, deceive Claudio. Number two, do you think that they should or could have suspected they were being deceived? So nobody took this question. It's my question. On the one hand, they saw somebody having sex with a woman who called out the name hero. So like that seems pretty obviously uh, 
clear evidence, right? On the other hand, the person who shows them this evidence is Don John, the bastard, someone who has a history of going against his brother Don Pedro. Now, at the time, Don John seemed like he had reformed, um, but based on the values of that society, someone's character cannot change. Someone's personality cannot change. So if Don John used to be a terrible person, he probably still is a terrible person unless he is very religious. And even sometimes when you're very religious, you're still a terrible person. So I think that they maybe they couldn't know at the time that they are being deceived, but I think they should have suspected that maybe this is not the whole truth. Maybe they needed to gather more evidence. So in fact, uh, Claudio, as we have been discussing, uh, is a passionate romantic man whose emotions often get the better of his reason. But Don Pedro is the most important person in the play. He is the at the highest level. He should be wiser. He should know enough to try to gather more evidence before allowing Claudio to do such a terrible thing on his own wedding day. And yet, you know, the person who brings them this evidence is Don Pedro's half brother. So like the importance is very similar. It's not a subordinate who brings Don Pedro this evidence. It's his own half brother. So the answer to this question really depends on how much do you think Don Pedro should have trusted Don John? Uh, and as I said, because he's a bastard, because he previously had gone against his brother and because he does not seem very religious, you know, whenever we see Don John talking with other people, he just seems like a regular guy. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's a sign that he has changed. So I do think Don Pedro should have suspected a little bit and tried to gather more evidence. Question three, thou and I are too wise to woo peaceably. One group took this question and they agree. They think this makes sense. In modern English, this means we know too much to cheat to uh, chase each other in a peaceful way. Why would this be true? Well, this group gave an answer that has two parts. One part is they have been arguing for so many years. They've been fighting for so many years. They can't just erase all of that history. They can't just forget all of those fights, especially in the play. We see that at least at one place, Beatrice really does manage to hurt Benedict. It's not something that he will forget easily. Uh, in the party scene. Uh, when uh, Benedict is wearing a mask and Beatrice pretends like she doesn't know it's Benedict and she says some awful things and Benedict thinks, oh my God, she really does hate me like that part hurt him a lot. So he's not going to forget that even if they do fall in love, they still have this history of fighting. The second part of this answer is, as I just mentioned, in this kind of play, people don't change. So even when they do fall in love, their characters are the same. They still have the faults that each person hates in the other. They're still going to fight. It's just going to be a lover's quarrel instead of a big fight. So it's not going to be a peaceful courtship, even if it is a loving romantic courtship in some way. Number four, are Claudio and Hero a good match? Uh, two groups took this question and they both agree. Uh, sorry, one group says no, one group says yes. So the group that says no thinks it's because Claudio doesn't really value Hero. Like he loves her, 
but when she cheats on when he thinks that she cheats on him his first reaction is that he himself has been hurt he doesn't think about why hero would cheat on him he doesn't think about whether it is likely for somebody like hero to cheat on him he only thinks of his own injury his own insult and you know if your husband doesn't think about you he's probably not going to be a good husband so one group thinks that they're not a good match the other group very interesting sees the same evidence and they they think that in fact this means they will be a good match yes claudio is kind of romantic and kind of stupid kind of impulsive Dong. but hero loves him nevertheless even when claudio accuses her she still loves him even after claudio asks for her forgiveness she is still willing to marry him so it seems like she would be happy with claudio anyway like throughout this process she knows what kind of person Claudio is, and she chooses to love him anyway. So maybe they will have a long and happy marriage. And this answer tells us that when we think about marriage or relationships, it's not just about the individual people. It's also about whether these two people fit. Nobody's perfect. So the point is not to find a perfect partner. The point is to find a perfect partner for you. And question five, do you think the play has a central message? Um, one group took this question and they think yes. I really like this answer. They think that the central message of the play is not to trust too much in the surface appearance, but instead to try to find more evidence to discover the truth. I think this is a really good answer because look, think about the two halves of the play. Claudio and Hero, this is pretty obvious. Hero did not actually cheat on Claudio. If Claudio had spent time to find more evidence, he would realize the truth. But also think about Benedict and Beatrice. On the surface, it looks like they hate each other. But when their friends make them think that the other person loves them, it turns out that they actually do love each other. So the truth is also different from the surface. And if they had paid more attention, if they had given each other the chance, to be friendly, to have a better relationship, maybe they would have discovered this fact before their friends had to trick them into loving each other. So don't depend too much on outward appearance. Try to find more evidence to discover the truth, I think is an idea that fits quite well with this play. OK, so we have finished Much Ado About Nothing. Do you have questions? OK, so uh, next week we're going to watch the movie version of Macbeth. And then after that, we're going to start reading this play. Macbeth is one of Shakespeare's four great tragedies. All four of these tragedies have to do with a king or a noble, somebody important who makes a tragic mistake and his whole life is ruined. Macbeth is set in Scotland, uh, in the Middle Ages. This is important because when Macbeth was performed, the King of England was James I, also known as James VI of Scotland. He was at the same time King of England and King of Scotland. So this play, Macbeth, uh, can also be considered a political kind of play. It's not just about history, it's also about the history of the current king. And you know, this can be kind of dangerous. If you get it wrong and the king hates your play, <laughs> 
you might die. Fortunately, Macbeth is a pretty good play. That's why it's one of Shakespeare's four great tragedies. So what happens in this play? Well, the play is named after its main character, Macbeth. Macbeth is a noble in Scotland. They're fighting against some rebels, Pandrin, and Macbeth wins a great victory. And the king shows him great favor, gives him a title, gives him a castle. So, you know, he's pretty happy about this situation. One day, as Macbeth is walking through the woods, he sees three very weird old women. And these three women speak in a very weird way. And they tell Macbeth that he will be king one day. Now, the problem is the current king, Duncan, is a good king and he's not too old. It's not like he's going to die anytime soon. He's not sick. Nobody is able to like uh, rebel against him. He's a good king. He should be there. So how would Macbeth become king? It seems like the only way would be to kill Duncan. To kill the current king. So Macbeth, you know, he thinks about it and he decides maybe I shouldn't do that. It's not a very good idea. He's a everybody loves him. It would be hard to do. So he goes home and he talks to his wife, Lady Macbeth, and he tells her uh, about what happened. And then his wife says, no, no, I think you should do it. You should kill the king. In fact, I will help you kill the king. And they do. They kill the king. They become king and queen of Scotland. Uh, unfortunately, they missed one of the king's sons. You know, when you kill the king, you can't just kill the king. You have to kill his sons to make sure that nobody can argue and say, no, I should be the king. But they miss one of his sons, right? He has two sons, Malcolm and Donald Bain. They miss Malcolm. Malcolm gets away. And so now we have a very dangerous political situation. Malcolm goes to, I think, uh, England to ask for help in fighting against Macbeth. Uh, and at the same time, Macbeth is slowly eaten away by guilt. By how much he has had to sacrifice in order to realize his ambition and his wife's ambition. So, you know, it's a play about ambition, fate, uh, ghosts, witches, and war. So, you know, it makes for a pretty interesting movie. Uh, and we're going to watch that next week. The week after that, please finish Act One of Macbeth. Um, and now I'm going to pass out the handout, let you look at it for a few seconds, and then I will uh, introduce the midterm exam. Hey guys, um, we're going to finish early today, so would you mind if we don't take a break in the middle? Okay, let me pass out the handout.
Right. So before next next week, please finish Act One. 看完第一幕 Act One is on、uh, ends on page. It should be something like ten pages. Act One ends on page one two six eight. 读到一二六八页 Okay, so yeah, you should come next week to watch the movie. It should be a good movie. I don't know. I haven't seen it before. Okay, questions about anything so far? All right, let's talk about the midterm exam. Exams. The exam will be an open book online take home one week essay question. Sunwenti. So here are the exam rules. the The midterm exam and the final exam are the same, just with different questions. So the rules are also the same. Let me explain them to you. The exam will have a deadline, but no timers. The deadline is next Monday at midnight. You must finish the exam before next Monday at midnight. Now, no timers means that once you start the exam, you can keep doing it all the way until、uh, next Monday midnight. It will not shut off after two hours. There's no timer. Meo ji si chi. Your answer must be an. English essay with multiple unnumbered paragraphs. So there are a few key points here. It must be in English. It doesn't have to be perfect English. As long as I can understand your answer, it's fine. It must be an essay. It must have more than one paragraph, and the paragraphs should not have numbers、uh, next to them. 不要上编号 Next one. If you do not answer the question, VT, or you answer the question in the wrong format, so you don't follow the second point, your score will be twenty out of forty, which is fifty percent.、Uh, the highest score is forty. You can write your answer elsewhere and then copy paste it into Moodle. So you don't have to keep Moodle open all week, right? You can finish and then paste it into、uh, Moodle. You can submit as many answers as you want, and I will give you the highest grade. So I'm not just going to look at your latest answer. I'm going to look at everything you submit and give you what I think is the grade for the best answer. So, like you know, if after you finish and you hit submit. And like you go take a shower or something, and as you're washing your hair, you think, "Oh no, I forgot to say this." Then you can run back out after you finish your shower, and like submit another answer, and I will look at the best one. The exams are open book. You can use any resource. You can use the handout. You can use everything I've posted on Moodle. You can watch the rec class recordings. You can read your own notes. You can use the library. You can use the internet. You can use Google Translate. You can use anything you want, except for other people. You cannot talk about these questions with anybody else. But you can talk about them with me. I wrote the questions, so I can decide how much information is too much information to give you. Um. You know, every time I say you can ask me questions, people will think, "Ah, the teacher's not going to tell me anything." Who knows?、Uh, I like to tell the story. Back when I was in college, I was taking a linguistics exam. I'm sure you guys love linguistics, and we also loved linguistics. So it was not an easy exam. During the exam, the the professor was sitting in the front. And one of my classmates decided to have some fun. He raised his hand and said, "Professor, how do you do question one?" 请问第一题怎么做 And the professor looked at him, 
and said, come here, I'll show you. And so my classmate brought his exam to the front and the professor showed him how to do question one. This story tells you don't be afraid to ask questions. The worst thing that can happen is I'll say I can't tell you, but there could be much better outcomes. Right, so use whatever you want. Just don't talk to anybody except for me. Now, the questions are open ended, which means there is more than one standard answer. The point of this exam is not to think is I'm not going to say whether your answer is right or wrong. I'm going to see how you support your answer. So this is how I will grade your exam. You must give specific evidence from at least four different points in the assigned text, not just four examples and not the film, along with the page number in parentheses next to each piece of evidence. So again, so there's some key information here. If you support your answer with four examples from the play, and each example comes from a different place in the play, and you tell me exactly where each example comes from, you will get 40, which is 100%. But you cannot just give me one example and explain it in four different ways. It has to come from four different parts of the play. But uh, the four examples must each come from a different part in the play. Also, you must tell me where in the play it comes from. You have to give me the page number and it would be better if you also give me like the scene, act and line number. Digi mu, digi jing, digi hang. Like, give me specifically where you find this evidence. And put this information right next to your evidence. Please do not answer the question and then put all of your evidence at the bottom. If you do that, I'm going to pretend I didn't see it. OK, so and then finally, your evidence must come from the assigned text. It cannot come from the movie. If you give evidence from the movie, I'm going to pretend I did not see it. OK, this is kind of important. We don't want to jump in. Uh, Pingvenbeldon是你必须要举证你的答案，答案对错没关系，我要看你的证据。你就你必须要从指定文本四个不同地方分别各举证一次，至少。所以你不能说拿一行字，然后解释四种不同方式，这只算一次。你要从呃文
I will see that you have tried your best and I will give you uh, 24, which is 60%. So uh, don't worry too much. As long as you try your best, you will pass and follow the rules, you will pass. Now, I said that you can use any information that you find. If you use information from other sources, give me the name of the source, the web address if it has one, and page number or timestamp if it has one, in parentheses next to each piece of information. So, the same logic. Whenever you use a piece of information from elsewhere, right next to it, tell me the source. If it's an online source, give me the web address, Wangzi. If it's a video, give me the timestamp, Zijian Suoji. You cannot finish your answer and then at the very end say, these are my sources. Again, I will pretend like I did not see them. You must give me the source of each piece of evidence separately. If your evidence or information does not have a page number or source next to it, it will not be counted, as I just said. Now, if you use outside information and you don't give me a source and I find your source, that is plagiarism, Xi. Plagiarism will earn you zero. If you follow the rules, but your answer is terrible, you will get 20. Sorry, if you follow the rules and your answer is terrible, you will get 24. If you don't follow the rules, you will get 20. If you plagiarize, you will get zero. Now, this includes even the smallest things. So for example, sometimes people will think, oh, this is not the main part of my answer. This is just background information. That is also uh, important to your answer. If even the background information is taken from somewhere else, you still have to give me the source. If I can tell you what your source is and you didn't give it to me, that's plagiarism. OK, do you have questions about the rules? You have to ask OK, so uh, if you're not familiar, we don't want to know because this this paper is Chinese. 如果你对抄袭这概念不熟，或者想了解为什么抄袭这么严重的话，这边有一篇中文文章来解释说抄袭的那个历史脉络跟它的重要性。Now I know that not everybody has experience doing essay questions, so here are some example answers to other essay questions, not to our essay questions. These are to other questions, so the information here will not be useful for you. But the way that these are written is something that you can learn from. OK, so uh, the exam will begin after class ends today and it will end next week at midnight. This means that next week during class, when we're watching the movie, Maybe you're still doing the exam. Uh, and I said you can ask me questions. So if you do have questions, you can email me. You can find me on Teams or you can ask me next week. Let's take a look at the questions. Answer one of the following. In the Merchant of Venice, do you think Shylock deserves his punishment? Why or why not? In Much Ado About Nothing, how much of Benedict and Beatrice's relationship do you think is due to true love? And how much is due to manipulation? And why do you think this? Do you understand these questions? Do you want to ask me anything about these questions? OK, if you go down, you will see a really, oh shit, I didn't do it. OK, so this white box 
you do not have to fill. So this is just to uh, a space for you to put your answer. If you fill this space, it will keep on growing. It's an infinite box. So don't worry about how long or how short your answer is. As long as your answer is complete and you gave four good pieces of evidence, each from a different part of the play, you're fine. If you decide to answer both questions, I will only give you the grade for the best answer. One answer. Yeah, that's it. So for the rest of today, I will be here to answer any questions about this. Remember not to talk about it with your classmates. Otherwise, good luck on the exam. See you next week and we're going to watch a movie.